could gobble up the whole world. Hello everyone, I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical precious metals brokerage house, specializing in developing programs and strategies for individuals for uh, getting us through the reset and to the other side of it. Now, you're probably here because you want to understand what's actually happening beneath the surface of the markets to those things that you really can't see. And I'm here to connect those dots for you so that you can make educated choices that actually support your best interest. And so to that end, we really do have to talk about Turkey today because I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about it, but I'm also sure there are something that you're not hearing anything about and we're going to talk about that. But of course, Turkey is a huge consumer of gold. Why? Because between the 70s and the 90s, they had an average inflation rate of 38%. So, and even after that, um, I'm saying through the 90s, but in reality, I believe it was 2003 when their currency was reset by lopping off six zeros. And then that old money was declared no longer money in 2005. So Turkey has a huge history and that's why they're the fourth largest consumer of gold and why they possess it in physical form. There's an estimated 3,500 tons that are hidden. Now about a year ago, the Turkish government and central bank concocted this scheme of these are sovereign gold backed bonds. So you bring in your gold and deposit them into the bank and we'll give you this sovereign bond that's backed by gold and you can get that gold out, physical gold out, of course not what you gave them to begin with, when it matures. Yeah, if it's still there, okay? Now it was sold as a secure investment and the benefit to the consumer was, oh, well now you would be generating income from that bond or that lease. There was a gold lease as well that would comply with Sharia law. And they're told that the citizens will now get income from it. And this is gonna be great because it's gonna boost savings. Really, okay. Well, this was on the 13th. Today's the 15th. The lira imploded. I know it looks like it's going up, but that's uh, the dollar going up against the lira. If you turn that upside down, it's plummeting. In fact, just in the past year, and this is a new currency, not a big shocker, but it's lost 95% of its value versus the dollar. So if you are foolish enough to believe the government's gold scheme, which I don't think a lot of people did, but if you were, how's that working for you now? Probably not very well. And just the other day too, they called on Turkish citizens to just sell that gold and turn it into that liras. Turn it in, support your government. It's your patriotic duty. Well, Turkey last year was touted as having one of the fastest growing economies, I think second only to China. Out of 196 countries that there are on this planet, Turkey has the 14th largest economy. And part of what that, uh, that enabled them to do, even inside of the destruction of their currency, really since the 70s, I mean, it, it just keeps going on and on, is, and especially in this QE environment, this growth was really funded by debt. Now, what I want you to understand is if it was local debt, in other words, if it's the Turkish lira, bam, that's a good thing for governments because they get to repay that debt with lira that has no value. 
that's the scam. That's, that's the whole plan of all of these governments and the level of debts that they grow. The problem is, is that a lot of this debt is externally funded. In other words, they issue the debt in terms of a different currency. So when you see this currency plummet, like we've seen over the past year, 95% just this past year, they have to take those lira and go out and buy those other currencies in order to service and or pay off that debt. So it takes a whole lot more of them to do that. And out of the $450 billion in external debt, a full third of that is denominated in U.S. dollars. So you've probably heard how strong the dollar is. Well, that's in relation to those other fiat currencies. But in relation to purchasing power, that's a different deal. Even in this country, we're now below four cents in value, in purchasing power value out of the original dollar. So what that means is that this debt is not payable. Big deal, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe it is actually a very big deal. The ECB is kind of concerned about that because you've got Spain, France, and Italy with huge exposure to these Turkish bonds that are denominated in other currencies. It could be local to Spain. It could be, you know, so it could be denominated in euros or dollars, but they are exposed to that. And you've got 16 billion that are come due by the end of this year, and they cannot pay that. They, they, well, I'm guessing, <laughs> and a lot of other people are guessing too, that because of what's happening with their currency, they are not likely to be able to pay that debt. So that means that they are more likely to default. Here are some of the banks and a little bit of the exposure but this could easily cause a global banking crisis. And we know how close or, or how insolvent the European banks are anyway. So this could push them over the end. And that, we'll know about that toward the end of this year. The end of this year is when we're going to know if they can cover up this mess or not. So, you know, people are always asking me when, and honestly, these things are way beyond my control. And even though I have a wonderful crystal ball, it really doesn't give me a whole lot of information. But what I can tell you for sure is this, that if indeed this spreads to the Euro, to the Eurozone, that is way bigger than just Turkey. And that could definitely make the, it could definitely have an impact by the end of this year. So we've got to pay very close attention to it. And honestly, that's why this is a big deal. Because let me show you something else here. First of all, you need to be aware that the contagion has already begun. These are different emerging market currencies. And you can see how they have been toppling. The Russian ruble, the South African rand, and uh, the Turkish lira is here. And then let's see, what is this? That's the Russian ruble, the South African rand, and the Chinese yuan. But of course, they're not the only emerging markets either. You see Argentina, and I find this really kind of entertaining, actually. The uh, Argentine central bank boosted the interest rates to support their currency. So here, let me give you more interest in this worthless currency, and then that should make you want to buy it. I think, my friends, that the days of interest rates being able to solve these problems is gone because going into this next crisis, you still have most of the world anchored at 0% and still many at negative rates. So 
what tools do they have? Central banks, the interest rates, the biggest tool they have. Because in theory, if they raise interest rates, because uh, apparently Argentina's economy is just overheating like crazy with all of that inflation. So if they raise interest rates, fewer people will borrow and spend. I'm pretty sure that the individuals are not borrowing to spend and buy cars and luxury goods and all that kind of crap in Argentina right now. So if they lower them, then more people will borrow and, st and spend and stimulate the economy. I think the days where the interest rates really uh, mattered in these instances, I, I think they're over. It's at the end of this cycle and they just don't really work anymore. But if that were only it, just the emerging markets, all right, maybe the world could deal with that. But here's the real threat, and this is Deutsche Bank. Now, they did an interim. I know I did something on their financial statement for the full year 2017. But they came out with an interim statement in March of 2018. And what this is showing you, and I know that it's small, but you have the links. So, you know, follow these links and take a look. And what this is showing you is the credit exposure to certain Eurozone countries. Italy and Spain being two of them. And they indicate here that in notional value, 50 over 50 billion in notional are tied to credit derivatives, which means we have no idea the true value that's at risk. And what we already do know though, is that Deutsche Bank is already insolvent. Because according to them, their leverage ratio at 3.8% means that if the value of their assets drop below, or more than 4%, I should say, if the value of their assets drop more than 3.8, 4%, they are insolvent. And last year, in an up market, they dropped 7%. So they are just being kept alive because they are the most dangerous bank on the planet being a universal global bank. So they are completely tied in. And I know people don't like this word and I don't like it either. I did try and find, you know, a, a different word to use. I couldn't. I couldn't find one that really said it. The global financial system is incestuously intertwined. I'm sorry, it just is. So it doesn't really matter where this starts. Certainly, Turkey could absolutely be the trigger, but Deutsche Bank will be uh, the mechanism to spread this contagion on a global basis. I mean, honestly... It really is that simple. And the other thing that I want to point out is how complacent and calm the markets are, at least here in the U.S. Now, of course, you've got some other emerging markets in here, but we're only 2% off of our all-time highs in the most overvalued market in the world. And the VIX, which indicates how the fear index, essentially, is still sitting near their all-time lows. Hey, what could go wrong? Are you kidding me? I mean, seriously. But who really feels all of this? Because this is really what we have to think about. It's the individual. It's the normal person on the street. If you had gold and you bought into those schemes, from the government, here, deposit your gold, it's safe. Look at this, we're gonna pay you some interest on it. Whoop-de-doo, right? I mean, certainly the destruction of the currency absolutely ruined any gains, just like all the tax benefits that the individuals got at the beginning of the year. Well, inflation has eaten all of that up, so we're not better off. The corporations got a bigger break than we did. We just got a little one. Theirs is permanent, ours is temporary, and it's already eaten up. Same thing with the citizens. So I love this quote by Ron Paul because it really does say the truth. Because gold is honest money, it is disliked by dishonest men. 
And that could very well be why we are seeing the price of the spot market, which is a fiat product, people. It is a fiat product designed to manage what the population sees regarding gold. Now, interestingly enough, today, as I was listening to CNBC a bunch of times, different of their commentators were talking about the fact that they're hearing rumors of central banks selling gold to hurt the price of it. Big shocker. That, of course, is what they're doing. But what they say is, but they wouldn't tell us about it. The fact that I saw it on CNBC, which is a Main Street media firm, is very, very telling because they don't usually talk about it like that. So therefore, my guess is, yes, it's happening big time. And certainly we're seeing what's happening to the price of gold in terms of the spot market and the U.S. dollar. But in terms of other currencies, and I'm going to show you that in just a second, the other thing that I thought was quite interesting is what's happening with Bitcoin. Because a lot of people feel like, well, that's the new gold. That's where I can run and hide. Well, first of all, it's nothing yet. And it's not, they don't really use it for much yet. And this is how it's been behaving. So no, Bitcoin is not a safe haven. But look at this. Okay. This is gold in terms of the Turkish Lira and it's hit new highs. I'm pretty sure that any Turks that are holding on to all of their physical gold that they have been accumulating because since the 70s they have been experiencing massive abuse as far as the value of their currency goes. That's why they've accumulated so much of it. They know that they're not going to get the protection from the government, from the central bank, and from the fiat currency. Not going to happen. By design, inflation is baked into it. But gold is globally used, so there's always demand and always a market. And really, what it's doing is just its most important function, which is to protect your wealth. So you have to decide, do you want to hold this mush of complicated fiat money contracts that you did not write and you did not read that are to protect the banks and the corporations and hurt you, leave you holding the bag? Or do you want to hold the one true money that has global demand and can always be converted into any currency, any good, or any service? Give me gold, give me silver. There will be a time when we will convert that into those assets that will be hurt or lose value in terms of that fiat money. But now, when gold is so dirt cheap and silver is so dirt cheap, thank you, thank you for manipulating it. I'm accumulating. You do whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm telling you right now, gold is where my personal comfort level is, and silver as well. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation. We could know something as soon as the end of this year, and we're already in August. It'll be interesting to see how this story unfolds. And I'll keep you updated on it because definitely we need to be paying attention. This week, I had uh, an interview with Reluctant Preppers. I, it's not out yet, but be sure that you catch that when it comes out. We'll send you the links to it. And tomorrow, I'm going to talk about what the smart money is doing in a number of different categories because I feel so strongly that you need to know what the smartest guys in the room on any given topic are doing for themselves. Thank you, Daddy. Do as I say and not as I do never made sense to me. And it still doesn't make sense to me. So we're going to take a look at that tomorrow. And next week, I'm super excited. Seriously. We're going to do a coffee with Lynette 
with Yogev or Yanev Yogev, and please forgive me if I have butchered your name, but he has actually experienced living through a hyperinflationary event. And just so if you know anybody that's living in any of these countries, whether it's Venezuela or Argentina or Turkey or, or have lived through a hyperinflationary event, then we want to talk and we want to share it with all of you because there's really nothing quite like having lived through it. I know this is hard to believe. I know it is. You know, not because it, it hasn't been happening to you since the day you were born. That's the way fiat money is designed. But because they can control the speed of it, it's happened over a period of time and you don't realize it. You just agree to it. It's that nominal confusion piece. But we need to know what's coming up because when there's no place else to go, you go to either hyperinflation or hyperdeflation. It doesn't really matter. Those are the same thing, whether it's, whether it's via inflation or deflation. So talking to people that have lived through this experience is, you know, a wonderful thing. So if, if, if you have or you know anybody that has, please give us a call and uh, let's have a conversation about it that we can, you know, possibly share. And then um, if there's anything else, you have any other questions, I have a whole room full of very bright people. We all work together as a team and we are all on a mission to help you through this reset and to thrive as we're going through it as much as possible, but certainly on the other side. So if you want to know more about the strategy and how that might fit into your plans, give us a call. We're happy to be of service. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Because remember, shields are made of metal, not paper. Bye-bye.